So hey guys, this is Vishwajit. Welcome to my YouTube channel. So in this video, I'm going to explain the coding part of my machine learning project that I have done recently. This is going to be the last video, hopefully. And here I'm going to explain the coding part of it. So if you are not able to understand what I'm saying, that means you have missed my previous videos. The uh, just was the complete playlist and then you will be able to understand. So this is going to be the coding part of my deployment. I have already spoken about the deployment, the machine learning. So this is going to be the coding part of the deployment. I have deployed it on Heroku. So first of all, uh, let me say I have imported all the required libraries, right? So let me give you the directory structure because that is extremely important. So this is how the directory looks like of my deployment program. Uh, I should do group by type. You, you already guys know because you have already seen previous videos and I have already mentioned many, many times that how my directory looks like. So this is the these are the libraries that I have used. I'm using the Flask framework. I'm using Pandas, Joblib and NumPy. Right. So there is uh, this is the app name and this I should speak about. There is a property known as max content length. So, for example, if you have, if you uh, upload a file, for example, if uh, you are like you opened my, uh, you open this web app, okay, this web app. Now, click to start predicting. Now, what happens? Some guy or girl, they want to test my application and they upload a one GB or maybe a one terabyte file. So that is going to be extremely tedious because it like the server is simply going to crash. Just imagine if it gets a one GB data, not one TB also, if it gets a one GB of data, what is going to be the condition of the server? So if someone uploads extremely high volume of data, for example, if I go on my desktop, if I upload a file which is around 70 MB, this is 69.687, around 70 MB. If I upload this, this is not a valid file, but if I upload this predict, see it's going to reject it. It's, it's saying a request ended it too large, the data value transmit exceeds the capacity limit. So it's not going to process, it's not going to transmit how I don't know internally how it works, but I came to know that we can do this using that particular function. So if I browse, if I send this file, it is simply not accepting the file because of its huge size, right? So now if I, so now if I come over to my code, so this, is extremely handy while handling large volume or large volume of size, a large volume of file size. So these two are used to redirect from one web page to another web page. This is my index web page. This is my form web page. Uh, so this this is my starting web page. This is carousel, beautiful carousel with the pictures of Cristiano Ronaldo. Obviously, you know, guys, he's the famous person in the entire history, most famous person. Uh, this is Lionel Messi, the best, I mean, one of the best players, best football players. So this is the first page. This is the second page form dot details. So this, uh, this redirection is handled by this uh, two functions. Now I'll, this function is just used to pre-process. Okay. I'll speak about this and this is for the file upload functionality and I should start from here. This is the thing that I should speak. So for example, uh, when I uploaded this details, okay, these details when I upload it, all those details are getting captured over here, right? Those details are submitted in the form of a, so these details, these details are submitted to a form into the flask framework. This function this function is handling this function this function is handling this data so now all the data gets stored over here that you send it so now i'm creating a data frame out of it 
and I'm simply passing it to the transform and process data, which is nothing but this function, transform and process data. So if your data frame contains uh, null values, simply it is going to drop them. This part simply it is going to drop uh, your uh, null values. So if you are passing any null value, for example, you are passing a file. So that time it is simply going to drop null values. And here I, what I am doing, I'm opening my custom attribute object, which is the initial transformer, the initial complete starting transformer, which I showcased. So what I'm opening the transformer, like I'm opening this uh, object and I'm saving it over here. Okay. And I'm just passing the data frame. See, I'm using dot transform. I'm not using dot fit transform because I'm not supposed to fit on the test data. This is a test data for me, right? This data given by given by the end user is a sort of a test data for me. So it's like the prediction data for me. The data that has to be predicted sort of a test data for me. So this is the data that is given. Now I am uh, passing this data into this initial transformer and my data gets pre processed. This is the pre-processed data. Now my second job is to open my full transformer. So here my data is initially transformed. Now this is the second transformer, the pipelines that I uh, that I have showcased. So this hand this is going to handle uh, imputations, uh, scaling those things. So this is getting saved over here. I mean, this is, I mean, this uh, saved transformer, I'm opening it. Okay. And if I come to the code, I mean, if I come to this document, don't restart. For example, this were this, these are the transformers that I showcased, right? And this are the objects that I created full transformer dot fit and transform. So this transformer gets fitted. Right, this column transformer, this get did uh, it gets fitted, okay. So when I save this transformer, this two gets automatically saved. So I just need to call this transformer. I don't need to call this. I'll make a video on this separately, but over here, just think that I just need to open the full transformer that I saved. And I just need to pass my data to the transformer. Say I am using dot transform. So what it what it is going to do? It is going to uh, impute the data, and it is going to scale the data. So my transformed data is over here, right? So now these two transformers I have used, and I am just gonna open the model. So here, what I am doing? I am opening the best model, the machine learning model that I have saved in the model folder and I'm doing model dot predict my transform data, right? And the data gets saved over here. So now the problem is this predicted value. I mean, this model, this model has only seen all the scaled data, right? So all the scaled attribute and scaled target are given to the model. So the model only knows scaled values, but we as uh, we cannot understand like I cannot understand scaled values. So I need to do an inverse transform, then only I'll be able to understand, okay, this was supposed to be the value, we need the actual value. Now, this predicted value, this contains values such as negative one, positive one, zero, one, two, three, like it's in decimals. So there are lots of decimal places, the data is like somewhere around negative one to positive one. So you can understand this is sort of in the standard scalar data. Okay, so this this is a scaled data. But we are not interested in the scale data, right? We are interested in the actual data, actual prediction of the player, actual uh, rating of the player. Okay, so for that, uh, I what I did, I opened the target pipeline. This is the target pipeline that I saved. So let me open this pipeline folder. So this is the target pipeline that I saved. So here, if I 
show you my pipeline folder so where should i put it okay let me show it over here so i am using this pipelines right deployment program pipeline there are four pipelines so i am using the first one custom attribute object okay then there is a full transformer this one and there is the best model that is over here model the best model and we have to use another pipeline which is the target pipeline okay we don't require this third pipeline i have just simply saved it if i uh, for debugging purpose or if i require it in the future we just need this three pipelines actually to do for the deployment and this is just for uh, this is just for my debugging purpose so you can simply go with the four pipelines no issues just it's uh, it's around one it's around one K, uh, kb file okay 40 47 bytes so if this won't matter much total is around 7.95 kb so it won't matter much so i am just opening the target pipeline right i am saving it in the target transformer and what i am doing i am just doing an inverse transform so i am getting the data i am just i am getting the target data i am just doing an inverse transform so it from standard scalar that scale it is it is changing to normal scale okay so now what i am doing there are i have seen there are too many decimal places so i have i am restricting uh, that number that trans that uh, actual number that i got into two decimal places okay and i'm just creating a new dictionary and i'm 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 just saving this data i'm just saving this data into this dictionary and that's it and we are done this is just for the saving into this dictionary the predicted value and the id of the player right and i'm just returning this new dictionary and if i come back over here i am getting this uh, dictionary over here and i'm just sending this dictionary to my output.html file okay and the same thing goes with uh, the file upload uh, one so here what i am doing i am just uh, receiving the file over here i am just reading the file and i am converting into into the data frame over here and simply i am just calling the transform and process data this function over here okay and it is doing doing the same operation from first so if you upload a file all the file is converted into data frame over here and the data frame is passed into this functionality transform and process data and all your data is getting initially transformed then complete transformed then it is given to the model then the model predicts the value then the model is doing inverse transform and it is returning the object the object contains the id and that's it the object contains the id and the player's uh, prediction value okay so this object i am i am getting i am returning an object from this uh, process transform and process data and this object is over here this dictionary is over here so i am i am just uh, getting a dictionary from this function transform and process data and i am just sending that to a different i am sending that to my output web page and that's it and if i open my output.html page i am just printing it uh, you can see i am just using the simple jinja uh, style to print the data this is a very useful tool to just print your values on html i am just using bootstrap to generate the table and my values are getting printed using dot uh, using this uh, jinja uh, formatting so this was all the coding part i have not explained the index or html part but that is actually extremely basic uh, you don't need actually front end you just need to i just wanted to show you this jinja uh, file i mean how i'm printing it how i'm getting the value into my html and uh, that's it for the project so already uh, i have shown you my source code and uh, this was working on my local machine but this is also deployed on the heroku platform 
let me show you so this is the link of my Heroku platform let me run it again this is the link of the web app so if I do it see this is uh, running fine click to start predicting so if I just uh, give some value over here and if I predict uh, I'm gonna get some prediction because I filled some values for this you can see 50 50 50 so the values are already filled with uh, 50 as their default values so if I do predict so yes you can see this is the predicted value so this is deployed on Heroku it is working fine till now and I'm not able to find any bugs uh, yet so uh, all the links will be given in the description just uh, check all my grid uh, git link this project link and the deployment link so just check in the description so I feel I should uh, make some short short videos on those training inverse transform those things um, that will uh, be extremely beneficial because I also was not able to understand at first but when I did uh, some research I came to know so there are these functions we are supposed to use this is the way it has to flow so I generally follow uh, follow O'Reilly machine learning hands-on so that book actually explains all of this properly so this is this was the source code I hope you are able to understand and uh, I have not done much documentation in my git I am gonna do my documentation properly and hopefully we will be able to see some uh, updates in my git uh, for this and uh, thank you for watching okay if you like this uh, uh, project series this playlist just give a like and uh, that's it thank you for watching we will see you in the next video